Okay, uh, let's get started. So welcome everyone to another lecture in our ID5130 uh, Parallel Scientific Computing course. So let's see if we can wrap up uh, numerical methods in op OpenMP in today's lecture. Um, so in the last lecture, we kind of posed or started to look at uh, solving uh, Poisson's uh, equation on a, a two-dimensional uh, uniform Cartesian grid, right? Or a uniform grid on on Cartesian. Okay. So essentially, uh, uh, this kind of gave way to a, a system of equations, which we were able to write it as, uh, you know, uh, as uh, if the if the variable was uh, the the problem or the variable we want to solve was let's say phi or phi of i j k uh, at any iteration k plus one. We could write this as uh, some uh, phi i plus one j right uh, plus phi i minus 1 j plus phi i j plus 1 and then phi i j minus 1 minus uh, delta being the um, you know the grid size assuming that it's a uniform grid the delta in x and y direction to be the same and then f is the right hand side vector which is also uh, which is also dependent on the spatial location in the in the domain and then this was divided by four. Okay. Now, depending on how, uh, depending on what values of phi are used, we said uh, the method is either a, a Jacobi or a uh, Gauss-Seidel method, right? Okay. Uh, so uh, we said that okay. So if you have um, the values of i at any when you are at when you are trying to calculate i j, the values of i minus one j and i j minus one are already computed, assuming that you are going in i increasing order and then j increasing order if you are you know uh, sweeping the grid uh, locations in that particular order right or the grid points uh, in that particular order right then we say okay this because uh, the i minus 1 j uh, this term as well as this term are already updated so why not use them to increase convergence uh, the speed that is basically use k plus 1 values of these two right and then as usual use the uh, whatever is the values available which are basically the old values right of i plus 1 j and i j plus 1 for uh, and then and then calculate this so basically this improves convergence that's what is proposed a in the gauss settle method right improves uh, convergence okay now that is good but then it kind of has a penalty on the parallel programming because if you try to parallelize the gauss settle method you realize that k plus 1 uh, unless unless the uh, you know i minus 1 j and i j minus 1 are calculated you cannot go to i j as a result you cannot go to the next one unless this is calculated you cannot go to the next one because they are used here so as a result uh, parallelizing this will be will be uh, will not be a possible right uh, so you essentially you have to run it in a uh, sequential way right so in order to do that and essentially to extend the gauss settle algorithm to parallel there are a couple of uh, different algorithms proposed in the in in the literature so we are going to look at two different uh, ways two different ways of uh, parallelizing uh, either the gauss settle or the gauss settle um, successive or relaxation okay gauss tidal successive or relaxation methods fine okay so uh, the first one is basically known as a a diagonal solver okay or a diagonal method or the, the second one is known as a, a red black method okay so let us see uh, each of these methods and then corresponding programs uh, so the first one is let's let's take up the diagonal method so let me first draw this uh, grid again so that it will be easy to discuss this uh, okay, so basically we have a grid, we 
have these um, horizontal grid points and then the vertical grid points okay and then let me draw okay so that's approximately the, the grid here okay I think that should be sufficient that's uh, it, it, is, it is somewhat accurate okay all right so we have certain grid points here now uh, what we say is that uh, we uh, in order to basically so uh, in, in, the, in all these cases when we refer to ij this is actually the the 2d grid location right meaning that i is running along x direction and j is running along the y direction now this is uh, in contrast to what we have uh, done till now in the context of ax equal to b where we have used ij as the row and column okay so that needs to be kept in mind that now we are now the ij actually refer to the um, grid elements here right so well, let's say if you have origin here and then this is the x axis and this is the y axis something like this so i runs along x and j runs along y okay all right so if you have any grid point let's say uh, you know some ij here let's call this as i comma j then we realize that our the values uh, let's say uh, i minus 1 comma j and this value this is i comma j minus 1 these are already uh, these are already updated right and available right and then um, when we want to calculate uh, this particular value then the other values which are basically the i j plus 1 and i plus 1 j these values are the old values right these are the old values right so these are the already updated values so in order to calculate what is phi at i j we would use all these uh, four uh, values right we would use uh, we would use this one we'll use this one um, as well as uh, we'll use this one and this one right so we'll use all these four values to calculate value at the um, at the ij right to calculate value at here all right then um, what we see is that if we proceed along increasing i and then along increasing j after i reaches its you know maximum value it doesn't really lead to a, a good um, a good system uh, that will that can be easily paralyzed rather what we see is that because um, because this particular data this particular calculation of this ij value only depends on uh, this and this which you know which are updated and these are already available so there is a data dependency in in this direction right in this direction now similarly if i if i take up let's say let's say this point right the data dependency is coming in these directions because unless uh, this value and this value are calculated i cannot calculate uh, this particular value right similarly if i go here along along this particular diagonal to calculate this value it kind of depends on this data point right on the on the lower one similarly along the same diagonal if i want to calculate this one it kind of depends on this data of course it also depends on the other points here and here but these are already these are always the old values according to gauss hiller the new ones that are computed in the in the current iteration itself are the ones that are shown here by arrows right and then those are the ones which needs to be calculated now instead of going along uh, increasing i right uh, and after that along increasing j it probably is a good idea to go along the diagonal for example let's say if i were to compute uh, any of these three points they only depend on the data which is uh, this one uh, and uh, this one right similarly if i were to calculate these two values they only depend on in the current iteration if i am talking about k plus 1 iteration data okay of course the other data is anywhere the k iteration which is already available at the k plus 1 iteration they would require data only from only from uh, from here right so essentially this data is required in order to compute this value and this value right so once i compute these two these two crosses then these black circles here can all be calculated once these two crosses are calculated right okay similarly if i if i kind of generalize this if i were to calculate this data along this particular you know green crosses then once i cal if i have calculated all these three black circles then that data is all it requires in that particular iteration to calculate the k the calculate the values along this crosses right so uh, what we kind of realize is that if you look at the the flow of the data rather than the accessing of the variables if you look at the flow of the data that is required by the algorithm 
the flow can be actually seen to be a much more uh, you know um, can be computed in a parallel way if you had if you had traversed along the diagonals rather than along the along the increasing i and increasing j okay so instead of traveling here like this if you were to travel along let's say along the diagonal right so if i if i start off here i would first calculate this value then i would calculate these values then calculate these values and these and these and so on right so if i do this uh, this is basically a lot more convenient that is because the values along the diagonal that we were to compute let's say for example this value this value this value this this and this right all these are all um, only dependent on in that particular iteration about about these values which are computed in the previous iteration right so uh, as if, if then what we can do is essentially all the values in in a particular diagonal right can be computed in parallel can be computed in parallel right uh, what can be computed in parallel all the values along a particular diagonal now what about uh, so that means the diagonal itself can be computed in parallel because all this data is available now what about the calculation of the diagonals itself can that be also done in parallel like can i can i have a loop which will calculate all these in parallel that is not possible because there is a data dependency that is going in the direction of the diagonal so so that means uh, the diagonals themselves cannot be parallelized however the values within a diagonal can be computed in parallel right okay so then let us see if we can do that so that means uh, we just have instead of that means if you were to write a code for this instead of our usual way of having two for loops right so essentially we would need two for loops to sweep this entire domain right essentially we would need for maybe something like j equal to 1 j less than or equal to n j plus plus for i equals 1 i less than or equal to n i plus plus uh, and essentially you have this calculation of uh, you know phi of i j at any iteration equals uh, you know 0.25 times whatever is the value on the right hand side so that's what we had we have been using till now right so essentially this is the uh, cartesian way of traversing the grid grid points now uh, so we still have to sweep the domain instead of sweeping from i equals 1 to n and j equals 1 to n we would sweep along the diagonals and and within each diagonal we will speed we will we will sweep uh, we will sweep the diagonals and within each diagonal we will sweep along this way right that's what we would do that means with two loops again instead of i and j you have a a, a loop that runs in that runs the diagonals and then we have another loop that runs along the diagonals right so you have two loops just like the counterpart of i and j you have two loops one for the diagonal loop and then another loop that goes through the elements of the diagonal okay so let me first write a um, kind of a sequential um, pseudo code um, so diagonal and after that we can see how to parallelize that and then we will discuss um, some pros and cons or you know what are the disadvantages or advantages of this method okay so diagonal solver or method okay um okay so this is basically for a 2d poisson equation discretized on a cartesian grid uh, on a uniform cartesian grid okay uh, now um so how many diagonals would you expect if you have let's say n data points let's say it goes for one to n here and then uh if the if the j in the y direction also it goes to one to n so basically you have uh one to n in the x direction and one to n in the y direction how many diagonals would you expect right essentially you would have uh, your diagonals will be up till here you have n diagonals already right so 
you have n diagonals here and then you have uh, another n minus 1 diagonals here right so total diagonals you will have will be 2 n minus 1 for a square matrix okay that means um, we need to still um, kind of sweep all of these right so we are talking about a particular iteration so in a in a particular iteration right the sweep of ij is now replaced with the sweep of diagonals and along the diagonal so that means let us have uh, l as the diagonal index so l equal to 1 l less than or equal to number of diagonals l plus plus right where uh, number of diagonals equals uh, 2n minus 1 right okay where n is the uh, n is the maximum number of grid points in both i and j directions right okay so you have a for loop so this is basically for particular iteration so you have another loop outside which is basically for iterations equals one iteration less than equal to you know number of iterations iterations plus plus that we are we are not writing here okay now that i have written okay then i need to of course set the indices because if i am if i am at uh, let's say diagonal one i just need to compute one value if i'm at diagonal two i need to compute two values if I'm at diagonal 3, I need to compute 3 values and so on, right? So we need to set these values. Uh, that means I would need to fill in uh, what are the limits for my i, right? Which runs along the diagonal. That means if uh, my L is less than or equal to n, that means if I go all the way to here, right? And the number of i, uh, the number of elements in the diagonal are increasing. And after uh, L reaches n, it, it will start decreasing, although L, L keeps increasing to 2n minus 1 from n right so that means i need to have a if condition which will basically set set me up in terms of you know what all i need so i, I would just use a value of i start equals one i end equals uh, l right so um so because if i am at the diagonal two i would need to go from one two and so on right so i start and i end will define my limits for my in uh, you know i loop and then if um, and else you have what you basically have is if you are above um, greater than n if your number of diagonals greater than n then your i start would be equal to l minus n plus 1 you can check this whether this is correct or not okay and then your i end will always end by n right so wherever you go here it will always end to n and then the last value will be i start equal to n and then i end equals n right so you just have one value to be computed so that is your filling the extents for your i index then so now we have a, a loop along the diagonals then we would need another loop along uh, the elements of the diagonal that is basically for i equals i start right i less than or equal to i end and then we have i plus plus okay that's your this is the loop over elements in a diagonal okay all right so that we have then now we have of course we have reached i start but then we still have our indices are only stored as i and j so we also need an index to access any of these data points so we would need still j right so what how do i fill up j j will be equal to you can again verify this thing j will be equal to l minus i plus one which is similar to here so this will basically give you the index of j for the corresponding index of i right because we were now uh, supposed to sweep in the in the diagonal direction okay then uh, if you were to store uh, the previous value of phi you could use some other variable called phi previous equals uh, some phi of uh, ij either you write like this or in a fortran context you would write phi of ij okay so you would store the previous value for that particular ij and then what about the update of the gauss settle itself now the update of gauss settle is phi of uh, ij equals so if i rewrite that formula we have 0.25 that is one fourth of uh, phi of i minus 1j plus uh, phi of i plus 1j Th this formula would not change isn't it this is a this is the same formula we are applying we are only changing the way in which we are sweeping the points right however this formula remains the same right so that means this is phi i plus 1j and then plus uh, phi of i j plus 1 plus uh, phi of i j minus 1 and of course if you have some right hand side you would also add that delta square times um, f of i j or whatever is what you would get right 
okay so that's or it will be outside right depending on depending on the values okay so would it be outside or inside uh, you have delta square so it will be inside only right it'll be minus uh, delta square f of i j right so that's what we have then you can of course calculate if you want to calculate what is the uh, you know the change in phi so that is basically you can call it as some variable um, delta phi equals um, phi previous minus phi of ij using the value that is just updated now you can close this loop okay so that's that basically pretty much ends the um, i loop and then we need to close the l loop and then the iterations loop okay before doing the iterations loop you need to also calculate what is the you know the um, tolerance and those things so what is the change and is this less than the you know required tolerance or not etc those things okay and then of course you need to also uh, well uh, fee is already updated so unlike jacobi you would not need two uh, locations uh, for the for the jacobi we we had to use fee and fee new right because both of them needs to be stored so for gas settle there is a memory uh, savings you just have you just work with fee all the time you can use some local variable to have all these things okay so far so good now this is is what we are arguing that is much more um, uh, you know pliable for parallelization uh, that means uh, let us see if we can parallelize this code now as we discussed can we um, you know basically parallelize these iterations no this is not possible even in jacobi this was not possible because the iterations only go in in particular direction cannot be parallelized what about the diagonals the diagonals also cannot be parallelized so that means all these should be seen you know what about the elements in the diagonal this is now what we argued that can be made parallel so all we need to do is now add a, a statement here this is basically hash pragma right omp parallel for OMP parallel for and then you have num threads num threads of whatever thread count you have and then if you specify the uh, data scope you have fri private variables will be your i and j will be private you also need your phi previous to be private and then uh, whatever is this delta phi you would like to calculate right the delta phi you would like to also add it right between all the points so this you would like to call it as a reduction operator right so this will be reduction plus uh, delta phi I think these things are pretty uh, standard for you which you can uh, easily do okay so that's all we would need to do that means there is a hash pragma OMP parallel for and then it basically because this is just coming uh, you know here we don't need another loop here so it basically ends here so that is fine that's all uh, we would need to do to parallelize um, gauss seidel using the diagonal method or diagonal solver okay now um, now the outer loop e kind of loops over the diagonals uh, and that needs to be run in sequentially and the inner loop which is basically the i loop uh, calculates the elements in a particular diagonal and this is what can be parallelized okay all right so this kind of method is kind of easy to implement if you look at it this is um, easy to implement because instead of uh, sweeping uh, i and j we are sweeping along the diagonals and i right so we still maintain and cover all the da data points now this also gives uh, this is pretty much gives the same except for the round of errors this will give basically the same solution as you would obtain using a serial solver uh, gives the or gives the same solution as that of a um, serial solver now however what we realize is that depending on the number of threads we have we see that um, the diagonals uh, see let's say as you are you know if you are closer to uh, you know the these diagonals this is fine but if you are along these diagonals you know closer to l, l equals 1 as well as closer to l equals 2 n minus 1 these diagonals the number of elements in these are very few right you have only three you have only two here you have only one and so on so as a result uh, these diagonals closer to 2n minus 1 and the diagonals closer to 1 uh, they don't have many elements as a result parallelization is you know the performance is not will not be great because uh, there is not much to do for parallelism here so uh, the diagonals 
um, closer to or near right near the ends such as you know diagonal is very closer to 1 as well as closer to 2 n minus 1 um, there is not uh, much scope for parallelism right or not much scope for speed up because uh, there are not many elements right there are only two three elements so you probably want to just run them in C or uh, only one thread will be computing and other thread will be just waiting there okay uh, whereas as you go into the interior of the uh, system as you go to interior then there are several elements which can be parallelized okay so that is one thing and then another another thing is that uh, we also have to uh, the diagonals also right uh, cannot be computed in parallel so as a result they all have to kind of wait here after each diagonal so there is some kind of a um, you know synchronization which is automatically achieved by your parallel for synchronization needed for every diagonal so once every diagonal is complete then only you can go to the next diagonal that means there is uh, two n minus one synchronization points that are there in the code for every diagonal to compute and then you can only go to the next diagonal okay so that is the first method of uh, parallelizing uh, the gauss heidel or gauss heidel success or relaxation using a uh, diagonal solver or diagonal method okay so let us look at the second one the second one is uh, historically known as the uh, red black coloring approach or red black um, method okay so in the red black coloring approach what we do is uh, essentially this is a kind of a um, modification of the uh, gauss heidel method okay so this is not exactly the same as the gauss heidel method this is a modification but uh, the changes introduced in this changes introduced in this method in the red black method are um, acceptable because uh, kind of gauss seidel only needs to provide is to provide a uh, provide an approximate uh, provide an approximate solution right at every iteration so because it has to only you know it is okay if it provides an approximate solution so that's why this method is kind of uh, finds itself successful however the results obtained um, you know will be different so the results obtained using this algorithm uh, will be slightly different uh, than gauss settle however the final result if you if you were to kind of um, you know converge them to a particular uh, tolerance then they will remind be they will be the same okay all right okay so essentially what we do in this is you identify uh, the algorithm itself lies in identifying two sets of points okay so one set we call it as so essentially the the um, the domain that we have is now split into um, two categories okay so one is kind of colored using red points the other is colored using black points okay let me first just draw the grid here so that is the grid so I just take it oh, this is too big okay I'm just drawing some grid here which is not perfect Okay, so then uh, what we need to do is because our we have this uh, essentially uh, ij kind of depends on i plus 1j, i minus 1j, ij plus 1 and ij minus 1. The idea is to decouple all of these four from ij such that we have one set that is for ij and we have another set here. Now this set, so this sounds like some other, you know, it, it's not like a gauss settle, rather it is more like a a, a new Jacobi method or something like that because now we are saying that all these all these points are decoupled so all these are evaluated all the corresponding fees are evaluated at uh, the previous iteration okay uh, 
Um, but then there is a slight difference here. So that means uh, we kind of color them. Let's say we start off with this grid point as red uh, and the alternate one. So we let me let me kind of color them as red here. Then I would kind of color them as red here. Okay, and then I'll come back here. Okay, let me. So I think this is probably. Oh, this should be not. This is not good. Okay, so okay, come here. So we have red cells here. Okay, the grid points. Then I have the black cells. So let's say this is the, the black ones. Okay, now I think you can clearly see the algorithm. So if we were to say particular ij is uh, is at a one location, right? Okay, now we have kind of actually have two sets of grids, right? Two sets of points out of the same grid. For example, if I were to calculate for this ij, right, which is here, then it depends on uh, the i minus one j, uh, i sorry, ij i plus one j, ij plus one, i minus one j, ij minus one. So all these points are now known as black, and these are all uh, assumed to be already known. That means these are all taken at value of k. Okay. Then we proceed with the calculation of phi ij only for the cal only for the red points first. So we we keep all the black point values the same, and then we come to the next red point, and the black points are already there, right? So that means, uh, as you can see, this is now uh, because the black points are already available. Uh, calculation of the red points can now proceed in parallel. Okay, now that is done. Once you sweep the entire grid ij for all the red points, you would come to the black points, and then if you were to calculate the black point here. Let me use a different color. Okay, uh, maybe a highlighter. Okay, so then if you were to calculate the black point here, then it now depends on after the red values are calculated, red values are now let's say at some k plus one by two or something, right? The iteration, if you were to call it as half, or they are at you know some k plus one iteration. Now using that, the black points are updated. That means uh, using this value, this value, this value, and this value, and similarly the red values after they are updated, the black values are updated. So we have basically we work with two sets. Okay, this is a modification of the Gauss Seidel so that uh, things can be done in parallel. That means all the red points can be calculated in parallel, and all the black points can be calculated in parallel. Whereas the calculation of black points must only start after the calculation of the red points. Okay. Okay, that means now all um, red points can be computed in parallel. Okay. Similarly, all black points can be computed in parallel. Okay. However, the computation of the one after the other, this should only happen after the after all the computation of the red points is done. Okay. So that is the modification that introduced. Uh, but you can see that now it is very easy to parallelize. This is like you know modified Jacobi method or something, uh, and uh, as a result, you can easily uh, parallelize this one. So if I were to write a, a red black uh, um, method, red black coloring approach. Okay, let me try to write a kind of a pseudo code for this, and then we will discuss how to uh, parallelize uh, this particular method after writing the pseudo code. Okay, basically, just like the diagonal method we have, or any other method we have, an iteration loop, iteration equals one iteration less than or equal to maximum number of iterations and iterations plus plus okay so that is the outer loop and then we have of course the uh, calculation of um, red points right or red grid points so that is basically your for i equals 1 i less than or equal to n i plus plus i just include all the values here you need to know if we would read it for the you know boundary points are not j equals 1 j less than or equal to n j plus plus okay that's what we have and then now what we are looking at is um, we are looking at um, the red points alone that means we are looking at uh, the odd numbered points let's say if I if I start off with i and j in this direction so we are looking at the odd numbered points uh, that means uh, if, if if i plus j is divisible is not divisible by 2 then we are calling it as an odd number point so if, if i plus j the modulus of is if it is not divisible by 2 if it is the remainder is 1 right uh, then um, you basically have uh, you are talking about the red points that means you would of course write again as phi of ij 
equals 0.25 times you know or before that you would like to want to save the value so previous phi equals um, phi of i comma j and then um, phi of i comma j equals uh, 0.25 times uh, all this entire code and then you would also need to calculate what is the uh, delta phi right delta phi Uh, plus equals uh, phi of ij minus uh, previous phi with some absolute value okay okay so that basically we are doing we are doing basically the same calculation as you would as you would have done uh, for the regular gas cell but we are only doing for the red grid cells okay uh, then we would get to the uh, black point so this is now done so this if condition is done then you are also done with the for loop Right, then you are also done with the for loop and then the outer iteration is not ended and then you have to look at now this is where there should be some kind of synchronization right because all the red points have to be first computed then only you can go to the calculation of the black points and that synchronization would hopefully be already taken care uh, but we are still writing the serial one but anyway we will come to that in parallel a little later so now uh, we will look at calculation of black points so for here again we would just basically loop over i equals 1 i less than or equal to n i plus plus right and then you have for uh, j equals 1 j less than or equal to n j plus plus you basically have two loops just like before and now we will check for if i plus j you know modulus 2 is equal to 0 if you have an even number then you will again update uh, the same block of code here right as you have written here so basically that will be uh, phi previous equals something update phi of i j and then calculate what is delta phi so these are the same code as before so end if condition and for and then end the outer for this is for the iterations right okay so that's all so basically we have now two sets of points we work with the red cells first and then we work with the black cells next okay now if you were to parallelize this thing as we discussed now because all the black cells are already kept constant at that particular addition we can parallelize this entire calculation either the both for loops or the first for loop right so i would just need to write a hash pragma statement here so this would be hash pragma omp right um, or else i can even you know basically start off here hash pragma omp parallel for the threads right parallel and then define what is my number of threads and then define the private variables and the uh, shared variables or something so the private variables are your i j and then the uh, phi previous right and then you are um, you have a reduction operator so the reduction is uh, plus equals delta phi okay that's basically forks your threads and then you can you can put a hash pragma omp for that will basically parallelize the outer loop right and then this will be there will be a an implicit barrier which of course is provided by for loop which will make sure that the red cell computation is done before the black cells compute and then you can put another hash pragma omp for for the calculation of the black point itself okay so that is how you can do uh, both the uh, both the calculations okay all right so that is the um, open mp parallel version of this uh, of the red black coloring approach all right okay so then uh, that kind of um, finishes the discussion on the gauss settle method parallelization of the gauss settle method uh, before um, I kind of close I would like to discuss uh, before we kind of close this chapter I would like to draw your attention to um, a, instead of a, a you know an elliptic problem that we have discussed till now let us look at something known as a, a parabolic PDE solution of a parabolic PDE which is uh, can be easily understood uh, using uh, unsteady heat conduction equation Okay, I'm going to consider basically unsteady heat conduction equation in 
one dimensions okay uh, that means uh, we basically have a, a a metal you know a rod of length l you know which kind of goes from x equal to 0 to x equals l and the the temperature of the two ends of this metal rod are kept at different values right so x equals 0 uh, you supply some boundary conditions x equals l at some time t okay and then uh, if we are interested in an unsteady um, temperature distribution then you need to solve for a particular partial differential equation that contains partial t by partial little t this is the time and this is the temperature okay equals alpha times dou square t by dou x square plus um, if there is some local heating that is happening that is given by this source term which is known as s of x okay all right uh, so we have this particular uh, equation and then depending because this equation is a partial differential equation there is a second order derivative here uh, and there is a second degree derivative here and there is a first um, degree derivative with respect to time here so we would need to provide uh, two boundary conditions at the both the edges and then we also need to provide an initial condition uh, because we have the derivative with respect to time okay so okay we need to provide two boundary conditions and one initial condition uh, then if somebody also gives you what is the distribution for s of x you can use that that is basically some analytical function of either based on x or uh, based on t okay we will not worry about that right now so let us say for this problem it is only based on the x all right then this particular problem can be solved in let's say two different methods using um, something known as explicit Euler method okay and then the implicit Euler method okay so in the explicit Euler method if uh, if it is given that you can choose the grid size in space as delta x uh, you can also it is given that you can choose the grid uh, spacing in time as delta t or this is the time step right so we kind of are discretizing both in space and time then um, using a you know explicit Euler scheme we can write this as uh, you know if you discretize using partial t partial t equals alpha dou square t by dou x square alpha is of course thermal diffusivity is a constant plus s of x then in the explicit Euler method This can be written as T n plus 1 at any i and T n by delta T equals alpha and then the right hand side is second derivative if you use the second order formula second derivative formula that you already know this basically becomes T of i plus 1 minus 2 times T of i plus T of i minus 1 divided by delta x square plus uh, some s of i okay. Now in the in the explicit method what you have is that this temperature is evaluated all at n okay so that is the discrete formula for 1d heat conduction equation unsteady heat conduction equation now what you have is that of course in this formula alpha is known s of i is known delta t is known delta x is known and you also kind of proceed from uh, n to n plus 1th time step okay so as a result you start off with some zero you go to one you go to two and so on right that means uh, and because this is explicit everything on the right hand side is explicit so uh, is there a scope for parallelization here if you were to parallelize this thing uh, yes because uh, it ti n plus one depends only on ti n values the ti itself that is the calculation of different grid points itself can proceed in parallel right this can proceed in parallel Okay, as a result, if you were to write a modified formula that is for T i, um, T nu of i equals, right, this will be T of i, right, plus some delta T times alpha by delta x square and then you have T i plus 1 minus 2 T of i plus T of i minus 1 all at the previous values, right, and then you have plus delta T times S of i. So this itself, the t nu i, which is going from uh, 1 to n, can itself be made into parallel easily using a parallel fur. Okay, that is no issues. Okay, that you have already learned. Now let us see what will happen in the case of implicit Euler method. So um, you may wonder why there are two methods. The two methods um, kind of provide uh, there are certain benefits with the implicit Euler. So 
the uh, value of uh, delta t that you can take in the explicit Euler method is kind of restricted based on the stability issues. Okay, so as a result, uh, the implicit method you can take any delta t um, you, you want. Of course, the of course, but that is not possible. The delta t is kind of limited uh, owing to accuracy. Okay, not because of stability. Okay, but then in the implicit method, as we will see in a moment, we will we'll involve a lot more calculations than the explicit method. So in the implicit method, instead of calculating, evaluating everything on the right hand side at n, you would calculate it at n plus 1. Okay, so that means if I were to rewrite the discretized formula or the discrete formula, that is T i n plus 1 minus T i n divided by delta t equals alpha times you have T i plus 1 minus 2 T i plus T i minus 1 divided by delta x square plus s of i and in because it's implicit everything is calculated at n plus 1 okay so this is also known as backward difference as such now as you can see uh, there is a problem if you want to parallelize there is a problem and the problem is to do with this n plus 1 right because now ti n plus 1 depends on ti n minus ti minus 1 ti and ti plus 1 so there is a problem here you cannot um, easily uh, parallelize this right but what we know is that you can of course arrange this as your uh, a t equals p right where t is the vector going from t0 t1 all the way to t n transpose right so you can arrange this and then if you had arranged this you also know that you will essentially end up with a triadiagonal matrix Right, and the coefficients for the triadiagonal matrix will be the uh, the diagonal element coefficient will be um, t i n plus one coefficient that is basically your one plus two delta t by delta x square times alpha. Right, so you get one plus two alpha delta t by delta x square. That will be the coefficients for the diag along the diagonals, and along the uh, sub and the super diagonals, you would get a coefficient that is basically uh, alpha delta t by delta x square but you are taking everything to the left hand side so that will be a minus alpha delta t by um, delta x square right so that's what you would get okay and then of course your right hand side b term will now contain s of i times delta t uh, plus t i times n okay so your b term b of i would be equal to t of uh, i plus delta t times s of i okay so basically you have converted this implicit euler method into a, a system of linear equation so this system needs to be solved at every delta t right that means if you are to go from uh, time going from 0 to some uh, t max right then you will go in steps of delta t so that is 0 delta t 2 delta t and so on and then at every delta t you need to now solve for this kind of a system of linear equation which is basically a tridiagonal matrix okay tridiagonal matrix and you have already seen how to calculate how to calculate a tridiagonal matrix how to compute for a tridiagonal matrix in parallel and that is what you would use if you were to solve um, such a uh, parabolic system which is discretized using implicit Euler method okay so that is all i wanted to kind of draw your attention to to this other um, partial differential equation and its solution okay all right, so um, I'm going to stop here, and this kind of finishes the discussion on the uh, numerical methods in OpenMP. If um, and then in the next lecture we will move on to the uh, programming using uh, our message passing interfaces. All right, okay, thank you. Talk to you in the next lecture.